first thing I would say is be yourself. And the second thing I say is be unstoppable. Hi, this is Jim T. Chong, the walk star. We have somebody that is actually multi-talented, and you're going to know what I mean. In this economy, you're going to have to really be able to uh, do many things, maybe a few things, do them well. Here's somebody that's able to live her passion. As a result, this is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, and I am with the incredible, the wonderful, the most magnificent... Jim Meyer from Remax Gold, and we are so excited because we finally got J.B. Wells from Wichita, Kansas on our show. Jay is an author, she's a public speaker, and she's an actress, and she is in the house right now. Jay, thanks for coming on. Uh, Jay, we've got a, a question because uh, so many people don't know what to do uh, today, but you're out there, you're living your dreams, you're making your dreams come true. We don't have all day to talk about all the things you do. So let's focus in on your author. You've written some awesome books. If somebody wants to go and be the next J.B. Wells, what kind of advice would you give them? The first thing I would say is be yourself. And the second thing I say is be unstoppable. Because without um, passion to, to drive yourself forward, you, you just stop. So if you're going to write a book, write two sentences a day or a thousand words on the weekend, but you have to make time for your passion. You can't just go around whining about how you want to do something. Do it. That's right. And so how long have you been writing? I... I wrote a little bit when I was a, a kid, but I kind of got stopped by people not wanting to support the storyline I wanted to do. Um, I, I wrote about pirates before it was cool. Awesome. <laughs> before, but, the, uh, before the Pirates of the Caribbean came out, you know, yeah. you could have been, she could have been filthy rich if she would have done that and sold it to a company. What's that D company? Disney. 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 Oh, Jay, you know, it sounds like you have the exact same problem I had is that I started writing at the age of five years old. And I remember my parents, they were not happy with the subject matter. No. <laughs> what is the subject matter, you might ask? The subject well, matter, your... it was killing your parents. So anyway, <laughs> uh, stop it. Uh, but anyway, so, so where do you go to get support? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I didn't write about pirates. It didn't get published. I wrote about mermaids. It was a secret passion of mine. Wow. Um, I used to draw mermaids, and my mom threw them away. So I just drew them myself, and then I threw them away myself. So it was a secret passion <laughs> that I had okay. until after I found um, my spouse, he uh, encouraged me to be who I wanted to be. And so, yeah, you need to have close, close support of family or friends that say, never give up, never surrender, live your dreams. Right. So you just have one person who believes in you yeah. Yeah. Makes all the difference in the it world. Does. And, well, you uh, know, um, a couple things. First off, I'm, I'm using my telepathy here. I bet you, and you probably know this, your favorite letter is R. Uh, R. You know why? You know why? Because Yeah, pirate. because pirates say R, but also uh, I noticed, I noticed it's very, very tricky. You're tricky. Also in mermaid, also there's an R right there. So maybe there's some ties between you and, you know, wait, I'll, I'll play the psychic. So you must know somebody or something or some location that has the letter R that has influenced your writing. So that that's, this just came to me, Jim. This just came to um, me. Jay, no. you, need to, you need to forgive uh, Mr. Chong. He just learned the English alphabet. Uh, oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, but, but Asians so, have... 
have with the R, you know, R, like on ice, lice, lice, so we, yeah, they, anyway. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. you could even say it. So back to you, Jay. So this, how many books have you written? This uh, podcast is brought to you by the letter R. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And Thank the number, you very much. The number, I think I lost track of how many books I've got out. Really? Wow. Um, that many, cool. The the first one that was published is called The Tale Begins. It's a soft science fiction novel that questions the heart of humanity when wow. a group of kidnapped individuals are unlawfully experimented on, turning them into 21st century mermaid or wow. human electric cave catfish. Oh my God. That wow. Is awesome. And, and I, how, I like how, many pages, how many pages is that book? That one's 466. Oh and my God. Wow. After it's illustrated too. Wow. Do you do the drawings? No, no. Uh, uh, this um, famous artist, she was hired by England to do a scroll for a medieval scroll because mermaids are wow. a, a, a medieval story and gene splicing, DNA splicing is a modern invention. So I wanted to mix the two pictures together. So in my book, there's modern pictures and medieval pictures. Oh, man. And I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed. I mean, there's a lot of things uh, there, you know. Um, by the way, um, you said the book was titled what? The Tale Begins, T-A-I-L. Now, this, that's, what I, that's what I thought. I, I wanted to see if that just happened to be a pun yeah. or was that intentional. And, you know, so, you know, what inspired you? I, I know, you know, you have the interest here, right? And, and uh, you know, in terms of the book itself, right? In terms of you getting out your story, what inspired you to be able to go on this track, you know, of just wanting to write, write a book? Why, why did you feel like you were really compelled to write a book? Now, a lot of people, those of you that are listening might be one of them, you say, oh, I ought to write a book. I ought to write a book. And I love oh, the practical you I gave. That. Just do a little bit every day. Oh. But what inspired you to be able to write this 400 plus page book and have it all illustrated professionally. I wanted to accept myself for who I am and I couldn't find a support group until I accepted what I liked. So mm. basically be yourself. And now um, you have tens of thousands of people supporting you on this thing called the internet, which is pretty yeah. awesome. I'm jealous. Oh, and that, yes. That's where the other books came in play was mm -hmm. I was writing funny but true stories on my Facebook yeah. and yeah. my fans were like, you need to collect them, edit them and put them in a book. So that's the, the get the get the bubble wrap J series because I was kind of a uh, klutz. So well, that's now you come out, you come out with these interesting uh things like i think it's very clever actually the way you described that book the first one you know uh where the tale begins i mean that one just the way you described it just makes me want to pick it up and find out what it's all about but then this other one in a more humorous way uh it's about bubble wrap out of all the things how do you connect that why where in the world do you come up with a title like that i love it though. i love the creativity part of it get the bubble wrap basically follows the fact that I can laugh at some of my own mistakes or some of the crazy stuff that happens around me. Um, yeah, you know, m make something positive out of something bad. Yeah, I think that's always a good thing. You know what? Bubble wrap, for whatever reason, you know, um, you know, the kind of words I, I have you put out, silly, other things. But you know what I know bubble wrap for, Jim? What do you think that is? What is it? It oh, takes a little power to do it. What do you think? Wait, wait, oh, I know exactly. It's when you're harvesting human organs and you're trans. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a whole other sort of book. Jay. <laughs> bubble wrap, obviously. <laughs> well, well, Jay, come on. What is the most fantastic thing for any individual about the bubble wrap? I, I have to admit that in Kansas, some of us use bubble wrap as insulation during the winter. Okay. Yes. But what activity do you do with bubble wrap? You pop well, bubbles. I, yes. You ever take them and just pop them for winter? There is so much satisfaction. It's like, you know what? 
in this time in COVID, uh, COVID-19 where you're not able to get out on the golf no, course, you just well, get some bubble wrap. It's the same sort of objective. There's a satisfaction just like hitting the golf ball whenever you pop one of those. I don't know what it is. But anyway, the title of your, your chapter, that's what it brought me back to. I, it's fun, little silly, but necessary, bubble wrap. You know, you have some, some other title as well. What, what was that title you brought up uh, when we were preparing for this? I mean, it was really a great title too, about you. About me? Yeah. The, the Get the Bubble Wrap J series or um, the Funny But True series? Yes. The funny, the, but true. the funny but true is actually the get the bubble wrap J. Awesome. And where uh, can we find all your stuff? On Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And because my science fiction has a national board certified teacher book review, it's available in public libraries and school wow. libraries and college libraries. Wow. Yeah. Well, you and know then, what? <laughs> and then I, I received a review by a psychology professor that said that my science fiction novel needed to be used as um, homework assignments in psychology classes. Yeah. Amazing. Well, when you see people, when you see fish, I can understand that. Now, it sounds like an incredible topic. Well, I, I'm very impressed. So they can look you up, J-A-E Wells, yeah. J-A-E and then W-E-L-L-S, right? And so, you know, one of the things, um, you know, that I, I want to say, there, there's probably no relationship, but there's no. also another famous, you know, who I'm going to talk about, right? Owen I, Wells. No, no, no. Orson Wells, right? And so, so, so any, a, no tie at all. I'm a J.B. Wells, and I think there's a John B. Wells, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, but there you know the science fiction writer, too. Yes, um, Awesome. So, okay, Jay, where are you going from here? What's the future hold for you? Well, I'm still doing cosplay and, and some modeling and acting. I'm Wait, still for those that don't understand it, what is cosplay? Costume play. Cosplay. Cool, right? And that actually helps me enter more into the networking um, because a lot of people will kind of mock people that dress up in costumes at a Comic-Con convention. And one of the things I like about a Comic-Con convention is it's a place for you to be yourself. And the first time I dressed up, um, they, they mocked me. And the second time I dressed up, I wanted to choose something that people would kind of recognize, but yet was still kind of my own creation. And in my science fiction novel, there is a belly dancing Jedi and a belly dancing Sith that cheer up the aquaphobic mermaid. So I dressed up as a belly dancing Jedi uh -huh. and it was a huge success. Awesome. There's a belly dancing Sith video out there on my YouTube channel. And I guess it shows a Sith in a different light. Wonderful. And so there are good Sith out there, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and for anyone who doesn't know, who's not as big of a nerd as us, the Sith are the uh, Darth Vader side of the Force, the dark side. Am yes. I right? But that's the thing about um, writing a book is you've got to dive into the antagonist mm -hmm. and understand their background. Right. So, because a good a good writer will show you how the antagonist does not think he or she is the bad guy. They actually exactly. think they're doing a good thing. Like Jim D. John, he thinks he's doing a good thing with the shell and he screws yeah. it up all the time. <laughs> he actually might destroy the whole time space continuum. The, I was going to use that word and that reminds me of another show that actually has a famous Jim in there. Star Trek. Anyway. <laughs> Jim Brady? How in the world did you guess did that? Jim Brady? Of course. Yeah. Space-time uh, continuum. That's not what it's all about. <laughs> okay, Jay, what's better, Star Wars, Star Trek? Oh, well, oh no, I can't choose between those two. No. Yeah, okay, what's better, Kirk? Apple and Orange? But it is Star Wars. But anyway, Kirk, go ahead. Kirk or Picard? Picard. Picard. Okay. All right. This. You know what? Our our time is up. 
Oh. <laughs> I'm joking. No. Um, okay, so Jake, so you're having fun doing the cosplay, and how often do you do the cosplay? Whenever there's a convention or when a comic book store hires me to dress up on free comic book day. Oh, um, really? Awesome. I, I dressed up as Catwoman the first time and then Poison Ivy the second year. So evidently when you're driving by and you see a dancing Catwoman, you kind of stop and say, wow, what's going on right. here? Oh, oh it's a so, wow. so you can say, get your free comic on, <laughs> right? Comic on. Free now, comic. Okay, so do you have, where is the local... Comic Con, where do you go? How far away do you travel? I've been paid to go out of state before. Uh -huh. um, so um, wherever people want me, uh, mm -hmm. they uh, cover my expenses. I'll, I'll go to them. That's what, yeah. you know, I've been paid to go out of state, but usually they, they don't want me to come back. One way ticket, <laughs> right? One way ticket. Now, you know, with what you do, I mean, it's really great. It's very impressive. I think you mentioned you have... Um, how many followers roughly through your different sites? Um, on my Facebook, I personally maintain a seven public figure accounts and you max out at 5,000 per account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I tried to keep uh, mutual friends between my accounts at a hundred and now it's down to like seven or 30. Mm -hmm. So um, that's roughly 30,000 people that I'm connected to. That's, that's great. Amazing. That's awesome. And, uh, and so are these people very supportive of you and uh, your endeavors? It's kind of weird because I have connections to liberals and conservatives. Uh -huh. So uh, I can try to get them to sit down yeah. for a cup of tea and enjoy the things that they like together. Yeah. So I'm the best of both worlds <laughs> awesome well you know what you know what so we won't go there black or white that's a whole other discussion i'm yellow right in the middle but <laughs> in all sincerity I, I i respect the fact that you've uh you've done what you have done you know um you know i actually deal with publishing and, and i'm a published author as well so i love the fact that you have a story and you you've, you've got it done most people don't get it done and yet yeah. you got it done at a very high level. I mean, 400 pages. I have to give it up for you. Seriously, that is an accomplishment. And a lot of people do it for, uh, uh, you know, different reasons. One people just do it so they can say they did it. They actually have a shelf seller, if you know what I mean. But yeah. I joke about that sometimes, but that's okay if that was their accomplishment. For you, it sounds like you can go on and on because you have that artistic ability, you know, um, as well. So where do you see, feel like your next – your next landing will be do you have any conception for your next uh writing or or where you want to go with all this well i've got a lot of fans that are bugging me about finishing the sequel to the tale begins it's called the tale snags um oh, awesome. cool. i love it i'm trying to catch up my uh, jay's funny but true series right now i uh, uh -huh. took a, a hiatus to follow my passions and saving the the soil and the water so I went back to college. Um, and, and so, um, so you got a degree in college. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's wonderful. So it, has COVID-19 or the coronavirus affected you at all? Yes. In some ways, no. Because um, in, my, in my private life, my Selena Kyle life, I still had to go to work. Okay. <laughs> um, in my public for you, Jim. Yeah. In my Catwoman life, yeah, it stunned me from going to conventions, but it didn't stop me from doing radio and interviews and connecting with people and marketing and doing YouTube videos. It, it didn't stop me from, from, like, when I interview on radio shows, I interview musicians. They're still doing... Um, things from home, like live feeding and, and writing music. So, you know, d there's other people I've talked to where they'll just curl up and not move. And that's not what you can do for your health, your mental, physical health. You just got to keep going, putting one foot right above the other. Um, one of the things that I passionately remind people is to live, learn, love, and laugh again. So you can't do that if you roll over. Um, right. 
uh, with the whole COVID thing, um, I've had PTSD issues with masks um, because of my history with my son's cancer and my surgeries. I would go into a hyperventilative mode of not breathing um, if I was forced to wear one. Now I can get away with doing a bandana on my face, but I can't. And I, before the MMA fight that I went to where we were forced to do it, I would go into hyperventilation by just looking at somebody wearing it. And now I, I don't do that anymore. It kind of, it's just, you just got to keep pushing forward. You, you can't let fear stop you. That's great. So anybody out there watching who has any kind of fears, uh, basically your advice would be face your El Guapo. Yeah. Do you know who El Guapo is? No. <laughs> okay. Um, Jim, have we ever talked about El Guapo? Um, the, I, I don't remember. The three That's Amigos. Huh? Okay. We'll put a little asterisk. It's the Three Amigos. Anyway. Okay. So okay. I love that because everybody has problems. So many people love to tell you about their problems and use them as an excuse. You, Jay, have no problem telling us what your problems are, but then you tell us how you overcome them, which I think if one person watching this says to the, oh, says to us, oh, my God, Jay has the same issue that I've got, and they go out and then they wear that mask with pride or whatever, uh, it's gonna, it could make all the difference in the world. So thank you very much. And, yeah. uh, uh, well, you know, John has no fears whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Except the fear of, well, English, I won't say it. The English, 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 English language. Well, you know, it seems like there's a lot of dimensions that, you know, to you. How do people see you? Do they see you as a serious person, as a humorous <laughs> person? I, I would view humorous. I didn't want to start there. But how do they view you? Do they come to you primarily for entertainment advice what what do you what is your crowd and interaction been like <laughs> i definitely have an interesting crowd interaction some of them like me for my intelligence some of them like me for my books some of them like me for my good looks um cool <laughs> that's great well do they does um does anyone I'm, like you because I'm of sorry. your tail because of my tail yeah you know your tail that's T A L E, of course. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. We've been talking about tell. I mean, everything kind of follows the trail, follows the tell. Okay. Well, um, you he's know. He's taking a course in joke writing. He's only <laughs> on the first chapter, right? <laughs> well, well, you know, this whole thing about telling a story is so really important. And, and you know, I encourage uh, for people that I, you gave some really great advice earlier on. Just, just do it. Even if you can't eat the elephant all, you know, you can't sit down and hash it out one weekend, just do a couple of sentences uh, a day, you know, and, and you'll eventually end up with it. Do something rather than nothing. Is that, is that right? Any other thoughts for people that might be considering uh, putting their story to paper? Well, I mean, that's it is, is don't just complain about what you want to do. Climb Mount Everest, go for it, have the courage. Um, Fake it until you make it. <laughs> never give up. Never surrender. And, and it's never been easier than today. Any yes. idiot can write a book. Jim, you wrote a book, right? <laughs> I did, but more importantly, you wrote a book. Yeah. No. Uh, and, and if you can't it is true, though. Organize but neither of us are idiots. We're in the power of Jim. You could get somebody in the Philippines or in, in Pakistan to organize it, to format it for you. You put it online. You don't even have, ever have to print it out and spend a dime on paper, and you can sell these things. So th there's no excuse. Don't yeah. let location stop you, um, because for the simple fact that you know I'm in Kansas, you wouldn't think an actress or a writer or would be in Kansas, but here I am, and and I'm still trying to fight for my passions and my dreams. And That's you're never great. Stop. Yeah, is it is it true? Somebody, let me think, talked about Kansas. She said there's no place like home. <laughs> right? Right? Yes, I did say that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So so uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy also Dorothy. said it, yes. Um, yep. and supposedly we have an accent in Kansas. You, you think Kansas? You have an accent? Well do do we have do I have an accent? Do I have a California yes. accent? Okay. Yes. Do I have an Asian accent? 
No. Oh, okay. Told you, Jim. I know. Told you you worked Jim. really hard on it, Jim. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. That's... Well, he's been my coach. That's the power of Jim. I yeah. used to not speak any English till he, he said, let me start you. The rice in China stays mainly <laughs> on the... On the tail. Okay, anyway. Okay. Well, I tried to make an a Asian version of the rain in Spain stains. Yeah, no, we the got plane. the joke. We got the, we see exactly where that was coming from. We're just, we're just trying to stop you. <laughs> Please, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try it, try it, Jim. It's just like Asian drivers. They're kind of hard to stop. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> so. So, uh, so Jay, uh, do you have any final words for your, your fans and for our followers? Um. I don't know if you've mentioned it, but, you know, Google me, look me up on, on um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, International Movie Database. Just yeah, we're going to put some links because people are going to be wanting to buy those books and keep in contact with you. Uh, I made a little movie called Predatory Lender J. Uh, yes. wrote a review of it, which I really appreciated. And uh, so um, are you looking for other movies to review? When it drops in my hat, I've I've kept my word and I've done it. And as some of the um, the um, directors and producers have said, I will give the truth. So. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Yes. Uh. <laughs> I've, I actually had a director who said he didn't want me to write a review because he knew I'd get the truth. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was that and you know what? And you know what? Uh, yeah. Another another famous movie. So guess why he was afraid to have you do it? Because he felt like he couldn't handle the truth. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, another yeah. famous movie, if we know about that. <laughs> anyway, well, this has been a great interview. And, uh, you know, thank you so much, Jay. And look for Jay Wells, J-A-E-W-E-L-L-S. You'll find her in Amazon. She's got some great literature out there. And also she does some acting as well, cosplay, if you need any cosplay uh, characters. It sounds like she's willing to drive all the way from Kansas to the destination. And, you know, really living your dream in this sort of economy, it can be difficult, but if you keep your mind open and you just do a little bit at a time, perhaps writing a book. We talked about writing a book here. You know, just doing a little bit at a time to be able to get to your end destination. Thank you so much, Jay. This Thank is you. Jim T. Chong, the walk star, and I'm along with Jim Meyer from Remax Gold with J.B. Wells. And thank you for being a part of The, the Power, Power of Jim <laughs> and Jay Wells, too. Thank Check you. her out. She has a tell to tell. The Power of Jim is a pretty big deal. Except people